Welcome to the 104 Tech Talk. Hi, I'm Todd Majeski with 3D Vision. Today we're going to talk about the 104 Tech Talk series, which is our monthly series on a technical topic, and we'll be showing this at 10 o'clock on the fourth Friday of every month. And thank you for coming. Today's subject is going to be on managing challenges of sharing data outside the company. And our featured speaker is Jeff Sweeney, uh, an 18-year veteran uh, in the design and engineering field. Uh, Jeff is a certified uh, SolidWorks expert, and he's been uh, an expert in design, automation, and managing engineering data. Jeff, welcome to the 104 Tech Talk. 104, Todd. Hey, guys. Thanks for everybody showing up. These are quickly becoming a, a fun thing to do. I'm hoping you guys are enjoying these as well. We're definitely going to continue to do these for a while. Again, like we did the last one, we're going to try to make these as interactive as we can. So definitely feel free to ask questions, and we're going to throw up some polls as we go through. In fact, we're going to start off with a poll right at the very beginning. And since we are talking about collaboration and working with other users, we were kind of curious how are you guys currently sharing your data today. So if you would, you should see up on your screen a uh, new poll question asking you guys how you're currently doing it. The, uh, you should see a couple of options. And if you would, go ahead and, and vote for us. Are you just emailing the files out? Are you FTPing them? Do you, are you using Dropbox or some of those other similar tools out there today? Or are you some of the companies that actually that you, you don't share data at all and everything needs to be inside? So give another couple seconds to answer. And there it is. Most of you guys are using email. And um, that, that's pretty much what we expected. Of course, the, the downside of emails is, is that you're making copies of files. And if I give email some files out to a lot of people, how do I know um, that they're using the latest if I make changes to and such? So um, th thanks for that, for those replies. That was interesting. So what I want to show you guys today is, is different ways that we recommend using SOLIDWORKS Enterprise PDM to do to share the data with other people. So on the screen, you should see a, uh, a relatively complex workflow that we've seen customers work with. We've seen uh, workflows that are something like this, significantly more complex. I mean, some of our government uh, customers have pages and pages of workflows. But at the same time, some of our customers have workflows that look just like this, very simple. Um, this is going to be up to you. You're going to design them. This is the workflow here that we're going to be playing with today. Uh, it's a relatively simple yet common workflow that our customers see uh, quite often. Um, files are going to start today in the work in process. That's where the files were, are going to be uh, kind of read only just for the internal group only. I don't want anybody outside of engineering perhaps to be able to see those files as we go through. Now as files go through one state to another, there are opportunities for us to have some automation, maybe alert users, say, hey, these documents are now moved on for you to do your type of thing to these files. And then lastly, when the files finally get into the approved state, I think um, that's when you might want to make these files all read only. Um, to maybe everybody outside the company and inside the company too. Now my goal isn't to spend a whole lot of time today with workflows, and so if, if you do want to learn more about workflows, that's kind of important to you. Uh, Cody's posting in the little chat window there a, a link for you that takes you to a couple of videos to, to teach you more about the actual uh, workflow process and stuff. But they're, they're pretty nice. I definitely recommend spending a little bit of time looking at those. So what I want to show you is uh, a little background of, of what my current vault is looking like. Uh, you should see on your screen just a typical uh, SOLIDWORKS Enterprise PDM screen. Over here on the left-hand side, you see I have a lot of different folders here. And um, that's going to be typical, right? I, I want to have a lot of different things, but very likely I don't want to uh, have everybody outside of engineering or outside of my company be able to see all this stuff, right? I likely want them to be able to see uh, significantly less types of data. And, and so we need to share the files. We need to copy those, those files to other people. As we mentioned back in that last poll question, your, your outlook is kind of a bad thing. Copies are a bad thing. So how are you sharing data with outside job shops? What are you uh, doing to make sure that they're working with the, the latest and greatest? Um, you know, lots of times people run into problems with uh, the shops keeping old prints because it makes, the, it makes things easier for them. But the problem is then if they don't make it to the latest and greatest, now suddenly you're losing time because you're wasting time uh, sending the file, the, the, the parts back, the completed parts back 
to get fixed. So if you would uh, take a real quick vote and let me know how you guys are currently handling the problems of sharing data with people outside in, in the real world. You know, a couple seconds, and we'll see the results. Yeah, yeah, about three quarters of you guys are uh, sending the data out, and, and you're trusting them to destroy the old ones. And uh, it works great when they do it, right? And so if they don't do it, so you can get the problems. So let me show you one of the tools that Enterprise has to, uh, to help make things easier for you to share data with the outside world. Over here on the right-hand side, this is the, uh, the web package that comes with Solar's Enterprise PDM. And you'll see that uh, this person is logged in as a user that has significantly less rights than, than a regular uh, engineer might have. So you see the, uh, over here on the left-hand side, I have quite a few folders, but I've only exposed to the person on the outside world what I want them to see. I don't want them to see other types of files. So if I go into this 104 Tech Talk, at this point in time, you see this user can't even see these files. And the reason why he can't see these files is the files are in that previous workflow state that we were talking about before. They're in, in the work in process. So the neat thing is I don't have to move files from one folder to another, like you guys have to today, and take a chance on breaking files, losing files, and, and that type of thing. All I need to do is take the documents and change state on them. So I want to go ahead and move those files into that no approve, the, uh, the, the release date, right? as I mentioned before, they're, they're read-only. The files themselves don't even appear to move. In fact, they don't. They're still here. But I am getting feedback as a designer to know that, hey, these files are currently in the approved state. Over here on the right-hand side, now suddenly these files are now available to my guy on the machine shop. And of course, now that he has these files, you can allow him to do quite a few things with them. Uh, certainly, if I trust him, I can allow him to uh, check these files out and even make changes to them, check the files back in. He could maybe participate in workflows, which is a good story perhaps if you wanted your customers to be involved in approving the documents and stuff. So we have a, quite a few tools right here just in the web. Uh, you can even search, so you can give your users basic search tools so they don't have to, if they did have more than one folder available to them, they would have the ability to get to those as well. Um, so I, I think this is a pretty nice tool. It definitely gives the ability to not have to email files out, as a lot of you guys are doing, and not FTP the files out. They can come in, get their own documents as they need. Now, if you notice, I didn't really point out, but you see the uh, the old yucky blue E here. It says Internet Explorer. And um, we were kind of curious, because I know that not a lot of people are using Internet Explorer as much anymore. What are, what are you guys currently using today as your primary uh, um, system here? The industry says that most people are, are currently using uh, Chrome, but we're wondering as designers, as people out there in, in the real world, are, are you following what the industry says? So votes are starting to come in. And of course, one of the big things that people have been talking about with this web tool is that I'll go ahead and see what the, how the polls come out with this one. Oh, wow. Nobody's <laughs> using Internet Explorer. Okay, so as you see, this is a little bit of a limitation that we've, we've been dealing with with enterprises, the, uh, the fact that this is only compatible with Internet Explorer. And to have you having to tell your customer that he has to use Internet Explorer um, kind of can get yucky. So what I want to introduce to you guys today is SolarWorks Enterprise PDM Web 2. Uh, the nice thing is that this, this is currently in beta. As you see, you're, you're getting a super sneak preview on this guy. It's in beta 3. It's actually scheduled to be released when SolarWorks Enterprise PDM Service Pack 3 is released. So it's uh, coming out pretty soon, probably around April, I suppose. That's about when it's going to come out. So watch for that. It's going to be available. But they did give me a permission to uh, give a demo, so I am. So this is a, what you're looking at here is Chrome but any tool uh, that uses HTML5 is going to work. All the ones that Cody had in this poll uh, is available to you to, to be able to use these. So I'm just simply clicking on files as you would expect. Now here's something you'll notice that I did not have in the previous version of web is that there's a nice little preview that came up. Now you think about it, that actually is pretty interesting because the fact that I could be using a phone or a tablet to see this kind of information and I may not have any ability to see a SOLIDWORKS document. So what's really going on behind the scenes is that when you click on a file, this, my web server is going through the effort of creating, creating this little image 
and displaying it for you. So it's really pretty neat, and it works with uh, several different documents. I've been playing with Office documents quite a bit. It has the ability to preview those, and certainly the, all the SolidWorks documents. A little bit more of a tour here. I have a the data card. Now it's not a data card like what you would what you're used to seeing. It is a nice, uh, just more of a tabular form, so it's not quite as fancy as the SolidWorks data cards. But it certainly gives you the ability, if you have the ability to check out the file, you can make changes right from here, and that will update the file as you would expect. These two options here are new. The ability to see what is actually inside of this. So the existing web tool, the downside of it is, is that there's no contains where you use build material information. But look, I click on assembly and I can see a nice structure right from each one of these guys. And I can click on any of these and it takes me to that particular entity. So it does, uh, these hyperlinks are always smart. And then where are you, so if I'm interested about the uh, where this particular document is used, I see that it's currently used in the main assembly, which is also in the drawing too. And then depending on the user, some users might have the ability to check out the files or undo the checkouts, download and delete. And of course, you also can give some of your users the ability to change state, move the files from one state to another. So if I click on the bracket, let's take right back to this guy again. This right here is the hyperlink that actually gives me the ability to download the file. And as we'd expect with a typical browser type download, is now I can do a save as, save it on my desktop or wherever I want to be able to save the file. So that's a um, pretty good, nice tool. And again, look, keep an eye out for it. It's going to be released sometime soon. So I want to show you, because they are two different products, I want to kind of talk about the differences between the two. This little diagram is one that I made up to help you see the differences between the two. On the left-hand side is the existing web tool that we have grown to know and love. Well, you guys aren't using Internet Explorer, so maybe you're not using it, but you could be. It's available now. And on the right-hand side, the, the Web 2, uh, this is going to probably be the big highlight right here, is that it is very compatible with any HTML5 browser. So you're going to be able to use this for a lot. The previews, a lot of people like that, the ability to preview the files, and certainly the contains and more use, I think, are going to be pretty nice. Everything there in the middle, both tools can do. Both tools can do some searching. Both tools can do file properties, check in and out. I'll work on, on the systems as well. So I think it's on um, user logins. I do want to point that out. Is that again, depending on who you are, that's going to depend on on who's going to be using these files. So this web stuff is really pretty important. I think that uh, as we, you should be able to see that there's going to be opportunities for you to share the data with people in, outside of your customers and stuff. But I think it's going to be also kind of interesting for you guys. You know, let's imagine that you're out on the road and um, you need to be able to get a hold of a, of a file today. And, and since most of you guys aren't doing the web, we were wondering how, how is that done? How, how are the people in the outside world um, doing that? So you should see a, a poll pop up on your screen for a little bit. And um, these are the ones that we kind of guessed a lot of people were doing. Um, my personal favorite is sweet talk the, uh, the secretary to email you the files. Um, but again, you know, there's problems with that, right? Now you have uh, uh, the two copies of that particular document. And you start making changes to the file. Now you get back into the office. And you have to remember, oh my golly, I have to remember to update these files. And then you also have the concern of, well, I'm working on the files. Maybe Todd's doing it too inside the office. And now we have two people working on the same documents at the same time. Uh, bad things certainly are going to happen when you do that type of thing. So with this web, now everybody's going to be able to get to the same files the same way. A VPN, that's a great tool. If you have VPN, that's certainly going to be good because at least I'm getting to those documents um, and I can check those files out. But if you, uh, if you do any one of those other three, you might get into trouble with that. So thanks for uh, for coming today. We, I hope you guys enjoy this. So I hope we have some things here. I see we had a couple questions come in, so we'll definitely get to those before I leave. But before we uh, do get to questions, I do want to make sure that you guys know that we're, we're planning on continuing these. We're going to do a, a SOLIDWORKS MVD, which as you guys know, that's the new ability to actually start dimensioning 3D models. So people complain that drawings are slow. Well, how can we get them faster? Not have to do them in the first place. And so we're going to show that off there on March 27th. That's going to be pretty nice. And then uh, we're going to be talking about the 3D printing in, uh, the, back in April. So we, again, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask them. We have uh, one question here already that I want to go ahead and answer for you guys. Is that I said that the, you said that Web 2 will be available in EPDM Server Pack 3. Uh, can I use that with older versions of EPDM? Yeah, that, that's a great question. Uh, I couldn't have asked a better question myself. <laughs> the, unfortunately, no. It's uh, only going to be available with EPDM Service Pack 3. So if you want to use Web 2, you're going to have to go ahead and upgrade your enterprise because they're using new APIs that aren't available 
an existing system. So you're going to have to upgrade if you like the web too as you go through. Got another question here. This is a little bit harder to read. Wow, that's, that's, that's pretty tiny. Most, most of my vendors want either DWG or PDF format. Do either of these programs support these formats for me PDF? Well, I guess I'm not sure exactly what you're asking, but we'll, we'll cut through those. Both of these guys, you can certainly if the PDFs and DWGs already exist, then the tool does give you the ability to preview those, and you can certainly open them and get to those files. It's a regular old Windows Explorer there. Um, so yeah, we, we can get to those files as well. Um, and even maybe nicer than that is that the tool can actually generate those files too. So jumping back to the workflow, those transitions have the ability to automate not only sending out emails, but it can automate the generation of those documents in the first place. And so we do allow those users to push those files out. You can have another machine internally that is going to open up those files inside of SolidWorks, generate those documents, and then, of course, they would be available. So I hope that answered your question. So yes, they're going to support them. In fact, the, the preview of Web2 does a nice job with the, uh, the, the both the DWGs and PDFs. If that's what you're getting at. So um, that, the, the Web2 is going to be pretty cool. Good question. Good question. Um, Here's another question. Is there a limitation on browser support? Yeah, there is. Web2, again, it, it doesn't have as many limitations. It uses HTML5. And so um, that's going to give you that. Oh, you do have the ability. There is one advantage to using Internet Explorer with Web2 is that you can. It does give you automatically a, a hyperlink to an e-drawing. So as you saw, the, the preview was just a little 2D image. But you can, if you need to, click on the hyperlink, it will actually open the guy right inside of uh, eDrawing, which is always pretty nice. Um, the existing web tool, yeah, the, uh, with EPDM 2013 and 2014, that will support uh, Internet Explorer 8, 9, and 10. Um, the existing new one, the EPDM 2015, they dropped support for Internet Explorer 8 and added 11. So we can now use it for 9, 10, and 11. So those, uh, yeah, that's that's the, uh, the the limitations there with with the systems there. Any other questions? Okay, here's one. Uh, I I like some of the things you showed in Web two, but some of my users need to have the web folder structure. What are my options? Okay, good, good. Um, so what that means, I don't know if you notice, is, is that with the existing web tool, when I was downloading, if you download files there, they go into a, the same folder structure is what the users have. So that's going to be nice for your CAD guys is that you don't have to recreate that structure versus Web2, if you notice, when I clicked it, it just went into my downloads. And so now all those files are going into one place. So there are, are some limitations, again, with the Web2. Um, yeah, and, and like I said, there is some overlap. So what they're not going to discontinue the existing Web tool. And so you can really run both if you wanted to. I could have the same server running Web and Web2 give them two different uh, virtual IDs, and then your user can pick and choose, or you can choose which one of those two tools the guys are going to use. Um, yeah, the, the, the other question about the Web2 preview. The Web2 preview definitely does SolidWorks. It does AutoCAD. It does Office. It does PDFs. And I don't know if it does any other than that. Those are the only ones I've played with so far. Again, the neat thing about the preview is it's all being done on the actual server itself. So your little device, your little cheap phone doesn't have to do anything fancy. As far as your phone is concerned, it's just a little bitmap, with the exception of, of the e-drawing, if you wanted to do something like that. So that's a good question. Thanks for that one. Any other questions out there? Here's one. Can, can web users change files? And the answer to that is it depends, right? Some of your users, well, I guess when the user logs in, that's going to determine what kind of rights that user is going to have. And so if the user logs in as you, maybe it's you, then certainly, yeah, you're going to be able, both tools will allow the users to check out files, uh, make changes of documents, and check them back in. But other users, probably a majority of you know your, your customers and those type of people, perhaps you don't want them to change it, so then the answer would be no. And so when you log in, that is going to determine what kind of rights your users are going to have when they do log in. Anything else? 
like the questions are starting to slow down a little bit. Well, thanks, guys. I um, hope you enjoyed this. Again, uh, hopefully to see all of you guys back in uh, March 27th for the, uh, the MBD. I think that's going to be a pretty nice show. And uh, thanks for your time. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to, uh, to let 3D Vision know. Contact your, your local sales representative, and they can help you keep going. Thank you, everybody.